I am feeling so elegant in this top while I'm also wearing casual mom jeans here. <laughs> so today I am going to show you how to make this grey top, which also comes in a dress length. The sewing steps is exactly the same, no matter is it hip length or the knee length. This sewing pattern is a modification of our all the dress sewing pattern. But Alba Dress has an open back and so many of you in Instagram requested to make this top more covered. So I listened and I hope you will enjoy this tutorial. I would describe the sewing level of this top as advanced beginner because I am going to use French seams and baby hem. But of course you can skip the French seams and use the regular ones and instead of the baby hem to use the double folded hem. So then it would be more like a beginner level top. And just in case instead of facing I am going to use bias tape around the armholes and at the neckline hole. There is a gathering along the neckline, at the front and at the back. Also, there's a deeper keyhole neckline at the back part, so you can comfortably put this dress or top on you. And if I didn't mention it already, this pattern is cut on bias. For this project, I used Grace pattern, which you can find in our Etsy or online store. Links are below in the description. This pattern comes in A0 format, which you can print in a copy shop and also in A4 US letter format, which you can print with the regular printer. Also, don't forget that our patterns comes with layers option, which means that you can select and print out only the sizes you need. This pattern has two length options, one as a dress and one as a top. And today I am going to make a top, so I am going to cut along this line. I will be using a polyester satin fabric that drapes very well. You can also use silk or viscose, anything that feels good against your skin. Also a matching thread. An elastic band that is 5 to 7 mm wide. If you want the bow detail to be more firm, then you will need to use an interfacing. Since I will be using French seams, I will use only sewing machine. And now let's start by cutting out all the pattern details. Remember to check the straight grain because most of the details are cut unbiased, that's why they are placed in this diagonal way. If your fabric is slippery as mine is, then place a lot of weight on the paper pattern to keep the fabric in place. Or you can also pin the paper to the fabric. Don't forget to cut the notches at the front and back bow panel details. Cut them around 3 to 4 mm deep. Or if you feel scared to cut them too far, you can also use a marker or a soap. The main thing is to mark the notch placement. This step is optional and you need to do it only if you want a statement bow as we have for the pink albatross. So take the back bow detail and fold it against the notches that are furthest from the next side seam. Then take the interfacing and cut out two details. I don't recommend to put the interfacing all around the bow detail because we still want the bow to be soft around the neck. Then press on the interfacing. For the green top I didn't press any interfacing at all because I wanted to have a bit different effect and to rub those ties around my neck in many different ways and maybe even not to tie them in a bow. So here you can see a comparison that uh, with interfacing it's holding the shape very well. Whether you pressed on the interfacing or not, the next thing we need to do is to sew the middle seam of the back. 
I am going to use the French seams, so we need to lay both back panels with the wrong sides facing each other. And yes, I really meant to say with wrong sides facing each other, because with French seams we need to do the things other way around. Stitch 1 cm apart from the edge. Then press the seam towards one side, and it doesn't matter to which side you are pressing it. Now take your scissors and trim off the excessive amount of the seam allowance, so you leave 3 mm of it. Be careful not to cut too far or cut uh, into the main fabric. Please do not skip this following step, it will help you a lot. So fold the fabric on half at the place where the seam goes. Try to bring the seam as close to the edge as possible and then press it. By doing this step it will be way much easier to sew the next seam in a very precise distance apart from the edge. Now lay the back panel details with the right sides facing each other and stitch 5 mm apart from the edge. Do not worry if the seam allowance is looking a bit wavy, it's because the top is cut on bias and we will simply press it out. Press the same allowance towards one side, and it doesn't matter to which side. Let's work on the keyhole neckline at the back. Take the shortest bias tape and place it around the keyhole neckline with the right sides facing. If you need to, you can pin it, but I will skip the pinning and sew it right away. Remember not to overstretch the bias tape, and it's okay that it's making small waves at the moment. Stitch 1 cm apart from the edge. When you have reached the curved part, uh, be very careful not to overstretch the bias tape and at the same time not to sew the creases. Try to flatten both the uh, top part and the bias tape. Just take your time to go through it. And by the way, that's normal if some bias tape has been left over, so simply cut off the excessive part of it. Now press the bias tape towards inside of the hole. Here I will cut off the excessive part of the seam allowance and I will leave it 4 mm wide. Sometimes I think why don't I leave a narrow seam allowance right away, because this might seem like an extra step. But the reality is that uh, working especially with uh, slippery fabrics, this narrow seam allowance can very easily become way too narrow and then I would be risking that the seam will rip off later. So I find it more foolproof that uh, to make it uh, wider at first and then cut more narrower later. Fold the bias tape around the seam allowance and then fold it again. And then stitch one millimeter apart from the folded edge. <laughs> Thank you. 
I am so sorry that I didn't warn you earlier, but at this point I realized that there is so much tension in the seam allowance, so I made small snippets in the seam allowance to release the fabric. In this way, the bias binding will be much more smoother. I also trimmed off a bit of the French seam allowance, otherwise it was giving a lot of thickness. And then I continued sewing as before. Here is the result, I know it doesn't look too well at the moment, but the main thing is to make sure that you don't sew in any sort of pleats, but if it's only wavy, then it's very solvable with an iron. I used a lot of steam and I even sprayed on some water. So at the end it turned out quite okay. <laughs> Now lay the back panel together with the front panel with the wrong sides facing. And now I will pin both side seams. Usually I try to avoid pinning and sew right away, but because this top is in bias and plus it's kind of slippery, I do like to pin it just to make sure that nothing moves too far away. Sew one centimeter apart from the edge. Press the same allowance towards one side. Then trim off the excessive amount and leave around 3 mm of the seam allowance. Flip the top from the inside out and fold it so the previously made seam is on the edge. Now press it down and try to make the seam on the very very edge. Stitch 5 mm apart from the edge. Press the seam allowance itself so it wouldn't look so wavy and then press the seam allowance towards the back panel. Now let's work again with the bias tape but this time around the armholes. Take the bias tape and lay it around the top's armhole with the right sides facing. Remember that it's okay that there is more length for the bias tape. I left it so long, so you don't have to worry and overstretch the bias tape. There's enough length for the whole armhole. And after sewing, simply cut off the excessive part of the bias tape. Repeat the same steps for the other armhole as well. This time I will do it in a much more timely manner, so I highly recommend to trim off that edge of the French seam allowance, otherwise it's giving a lot of thickness. And then I am trimming off the excessive part of the seam allowance and also I will do those small snips in the seam allowance where the armhole is more curved.
The next step I will show you is optional. It will help with ironing, but at the same time it will give a bit of thickness, so it's up to you whether you do it or not. So I suggest to understitch, which means to make a stitch 1mm apart from the seam we made previously and catch both the bias tape as well as the seam allowances under it. Here you can see the result and it even feels like it's folding way much easier. And of course repeat it with the other armhole as well. Now fold the bias tape and press around the armholes. You don't have to flatten it out completely on the curved part, just make sure you press the seam. Now fold the bias tape around the seam allowance and stitch 1mm apart from the folded edge. I usually don't pin it, I fold it on the spot while I'm sewing. And again, it's okay if it's not looking smooth yet. We will press it and it will look great. And of course the other side as well. And now let's press it and we will make it completely flat. We are actually quite far already. So now let's work on the gathered neckline. We need to set sewing machine stitch to the maximum or to the number 4 and we will not backstitch. We will need to gather 3 edges, which is the front neckline and then both necklines at the back. And we will need to gather them separately. Ok, let's make the first stitch around 6 mm apart from the edge. Don't forget to leave long tails of the threads. And now we need to sew another line. I would say around 2 mm apart from the previous stitch. The main thing is to keep a bit of distance and never cross the previous stitch. I remember when I started to sew, I didn't understand why do I need to make two lines if I can make only one and it's still possible to make the gathering. But the thing is that there's a lot of weight on that one thread and I often ended up being halfway on the gathering when the thread broke and I had to redo the stitch again. But with two threads it's rarely the case. Lay the bow front panel with the bow back panel with the right sides facing each other. And pin the side seams. By the way, we don't have any French seams left, so these will be the regular ones. I will work with both side seams simultaneously. Sew so 1 cm apart from the edge. Press the seams towards the back panels. To add an interesting detail, let's use an elastic band to gather both side seams. We will need two pieces in 10 cm length. Or if you prefer inches, then we need to cut 4 inches. Now take only the seam allowance and pin the top and the bottom of the elastic band to the seam allowance. Stretch the elastic band and sew on the middle of the seam allowance. Now 
repeat it with the other side as well. I chose this way of gathering for neckline because it seems a bit more softer and it's not fixed in the place. Fold the bow lengthwise on half with the right sides facing. Then pin starting from the tail until the first notch. Then you will need to leave a hole between the first and the second notch. And then you will need to sew again between the second and the third notch. And you can probably imagine that in those holes the top will be joined in. I am additionally marking those notches with the marker just to be completely sure that I don't miss them. Stitch 1 cm apart from the edge. Trim off the corners. Just be very careful not to cut in the stitch. It's very important to do this, otherwise we will not be able to get very sharp corners later. Use some sort of a stick to flip the bow from the inside out. Yes, it's very convenient to press against your abs. <laughs> Let's press the bow now. It's very important to bring the seam we previously made as close to the edge as possible. I even like to use a needle to push the stitch towards the edge, but be very careful not to ruin the fabric itself. Oh, and the corners, that's a very important part to show your skills. So try to carefully bring the corner as out as possible by using a needle. But be careful not to overdo it because remember on that very corner there's only a little seam allowance left and from my experience sometimes I try too hard and I even bring out that seam allowance which is, which is not good. <laughs> After you have finished with the bottom edge, press all over the bow, except the side seams and the front part. Here at the front we need to press only the bottom edge. And for those parts where there are holes, simply fold in their seam allowances and press over them as well. Let's join the top with the bow panel. We need to gather the neckline until the length is the same for the according openings of the bow. For this uh, longest front neckline and the longest opening, just to be sure, I will mark the middle points, so I will be able to gather more evenly. But it's not mandatory, it's just my own personal preference. Now pull the threads only from one side. Thank you. 
then check if the length is somewhat matching and then start pinning inside the opening. Pin one side of the bow with the top so the right sides are facing each other. Match the middle point and both edges of the neckline with the start and end of the opening. When you have done it, you can finish by evening out the gathering. Pin as much as you need. Stitch 1 cm apart from the edge. Try to start and end the stitch as very close where the opening has started and ended. And here let's do a bit of post treatment. I will trim off the excessive threads and I will also check whether I can see any gathering stitches from the right side. It's very possible that you don't have them, but I do. So I will use the pliers and I will try to pull them out. And be very careful not to pull out the stitch that is making the seam, just only the gathering stitches that are visible. So now it's looking much more cleaner. And now we will need to do exactly the same steps for both back neckline parts. Only this time they are way much shorter, so I will not even mark the middle part of the line. Remember to pin the cording side of the bow to the top's right side. And again, stitch 1 cm apart from the edge. For these back parts, also check whether the gathering stitches are visible. And if they are, then uh, it's better to take them out. If you want to, you can use a stitch in a ditch method, but I will use a simple invisible hand stitch because I actually found it to be much more quicker. I mean, for this case, because the seams aren't so long, and for stitch in a ditch method, I still prefer to hand stitch before sewing, so it's kind of the same amount of time. Make small stitches in the pressed edge of the bow and small stitches in the top and try to cover the previously made seam with the fabric of the bow panel. Work in this way for other two openings as well. We are almost finished, we only need to do the hem. If you want to, you can use the double folded hem. But I will use the baby hem because I feel it's looking more delicate. So I will simply fold 1 cm of the edge and stitch 2 mm apart from the folded edge. Use your sharpest scissors and trim off the seam allowance. 
but be very careful not to cut in the stitch or don't cut in the main fabric. Now fold this edge again and stitch 3 millimeters apart from the edge. Now give the final press and you have finished. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please leave us thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more sewing and knitting tutorials. Bye!